Hi friends, Steve here from Blackstar. This is my own personal guide to the new ID Core high powered amplifiers. Um, hopefully it will give you some ideas when you go into stores and speak to dealers and train guitar stuff. This is generally how I conduct my, my training. So basically, at the moment I've got the full five way optional board which is made out of a, a metal casing linked to the included plastic casing. Um, obviously when you're choosing to use just the two there are a few options that we can look at with that as well but for now I've just linked both together to make life a bit easier but I'll show you that on its own in a moment. So the first thing generally I'll do is I'll, go, I'll run through the basic six voices. Um, it's the same as ID Core and the same as Beam and ID Series so there's two cleans two crunch and two overdrives so you can go from clean to scream nice and easy um, a lot of people this is the 100 watt version and there also is a 150 as I'm, I'm sure you know a lot of people will talk about the headroom on the clean and, and the, the 100 it's pretty good but the 150 will have a, a, a whole ton of headroom for for that particular guy asking about that but um, it generally on the clean warm is where I go for that sort of demo and around about two o'clock on the gain and two o'clock on the volume and then increase the master. <laughs> give you a fair amount of headroom. Um, one of the things I suggest with this amplifier is if you really do crank it, um, it really holds its own definitely against a drummer. Um, um, the only way to differentiate the two I would suggest is that the 100 watt is really suited to the rock, blues and indie sort of band uh, where you're not determined by the level of the drummer. Uh, the 150 is suited for a band that is determined by the level of the drummer basically. So um, loud and clean or loud and high gain. Uh, double double kick kind of kind of guy, so that's where that's where each model sits in my opinion. Um, one of the things to talk about if we just put a splash of reverb on, um, the first thing I'm going to show you is the crunch and the way it cleans up. It's really really good. Um, I'm currently using my um, Music Man, which I'm sure you recognise with humbuckers, but I can actually split the coil series and parallel there. So a single coil works great for this demo. Humbuckers, it kind of does the trick, but if you've got a single, single hum, then you're sorted. But basically, um, if I choose a crunch uh, and turn the gain up full tilt, um, my volume's up full and I'm on my kind of neck pickup single coil. Over to the bridge. You can dynamically clean up your pickups really, really well. Um, so that's on single core with my volume tilted back about halfway. on the bridge And the digital team worked really hard to make sure that that cleans up really organically. Um, so it's very cool to try. So that's the first thing I normally talk about. 
Um, second thing is a little bit of spec. Both models use 2x10 guitar loudspeakers. Of course, ID Core, ID Core Beam use full range, flat response, hi fi sort of speakers. ID Core 40 was the model that kind of prompted the thought process with this loud stuff because people were saying, can I gig the ID Core 40? Uh, the answer usually should be no, unless you've got a really great PA and a couple of SM57s in front. Um, or you're utilizing the emulated out and you have a great PA. It's not really built for it. This is built for it. These are proper guitar loudspeakers, 2x10 on each model. Um, there are 36 patches that you can store. Uh, on the top here, you can store nine, so three, three lots of three. So there's, if we're in, ban we're in manual mode at the moment, as the pedal suggests, if we go to bank mode, we've got, uh, there we go, green, one, two, three. Uh, amber one two three and red one two three so you can store nine um, on the front by just simply holding and then pressing again uh, if you're using the larger foot switch or the insider software via your, via your computer you can store up to 36 um, added features are the octaver and the looper these are big things big exciting things about the product a lot of bang for your buck, you're getting the amp, you're getting a looper, 30 seconds, basically a ditto looper, um, and also an octaver, so basically uh, electro -harm harmonics pog, or that sort of thing. So, with the, um, with the octave, I'm going to show you that first, this is generally what I do, there's three, three representations of demo that I do, I usually choose a clean. <laughs> of reverb modulations okay so now we have phaser as normal um, flanger and chorus within segment 2 which is new so basically the best way to get this across I've found is at the bottom you're talking about a chorus so tap the tempo quite fast so it's a thick and creamy chorus up towards the flanger you want it really really slow for that so tap the tempo so you can get some cool in between sounds in the middle there which of course left the segment free for the octaver in the third segment so at the thinnest part of the segment, the lowest part of the segment, you're talking about a low octave. At the highest part of the segment, you're talking about the high octave. So there's a few things you can do here. Obviously, if it's left in the wrong hands, you can have a high octave with a full... This is your wet and a dry mix. This is fully guitar, fully octave on 10. Uh, if it's left in the wrong hands, like I said, you can get that awful whammy left up all the way sort of sound nobody wants that on a Saturday afternoon in a guitar shop so um, you can talk about that a little bit and make a joke about it like I do um, but basically if you choose a high octave and a low mix you can sort of replicate that nice Rickenbacker 12 string sort of sound <laughs> The, the Beatles Hard Day's Night opening chord, you kind of sets you up nicely. It's been a hard. You get the idea. Great for those Tom Petty fans and stuff, traveling Wilburys and so on. Next demo I do, I generally bring the octave down to the first part of the segment, increase the mix. And choose a high gain. This is obviously uh, a nice effect for a very modern sort of guitar player. We're talking about the likes of Royal Blood, uh, Matt Bellamy from Muse, Jack White sort of thing, Rival Sons, nice riffs, distortion, low octave. <laughs>
pretty cool sounds really nice you can get some riffs going on that sounds great impressive um, probably less reverb to be honest with you if you're doing that <laughs> Now, if we're choosing a clean moment, clean voicing for the moment, one thing you'll notice is there's a little bit of a tracking issue, which is kind of inherent, really. But for the price you're paying for this product, you can kind of live with it. Um, if we go low octave and then um, fully wet, it's not too bad. I'm making it sound like a bass guitar there. Um, if you notice my playing, you'll probably see the tracking is just very, very minutely out. But you can live with it. It's easy to live with it. It's fine. Increase the level back. Decrease, should I say. And we get the original guitar signal. It's a lot easier to deal with then. And so on. Um, so you can talk about that a little bit. Just in case, I'm just prompting questions that people will ask and people will probably notice. So I've answered that already. Um, is the is the vibe? Um, next demonstration I do is a mixture of the two to sort of create that pog sort of sound. Mel nine electro harmonics, flamboyant octaves getting that sort of organ sound. I then add a very, very over the top reverb. Sounds like we're in a huge cave. I then add a delay, fairly generous as well, because I want this sort of thing to last. This is where I'm doing the, uh, the old trick of the octave, um, either the octave notes or an added extra note there, doing the volume swell. And guess what? Sounds even better with the Octaver in there. That's the sort of effect that you can do to impress more of the pro guy in store. Somebody who might be into Strymon, they've got their own timeline, they've got a big sky, they've got the new MXR um, with the ethereal sort of pad reverbs. That's the sort of thing you can get into their world with and it's built in into a, a low cost amplifier. Really, really cool. Um, and of course, when you come to looping, that's really cool to use. It's a little bit difficult to do a loop, but I'm gonna try um, because I'm not, it's not on the floor etc etc so the first thing I'm going to do is just use the two-way because this is supplied and this is the first thing you'll see when it comes out of the box so let's uh, go back to a manual sound let's add a reverb So let's try a loop. Basically, the two-way pedal that comes supplied is a plastic casing. It's nice and light, keeping the cost down. Before I go any further, the concept of this amplifier is lightweight, high power, compact. Um, please go for the two-finger lift, nice and easy in the store. Let people, f let people see just how light it is because it is really, really light. And a lot of people have been asking about that. You know, lightweight, high power. Here it is, Black Star ID Core 100 and 150. Um, the 150 physically isn't that much bigger. Um, it does have a slightly larger Black Star logo, and it's probably about an inch that way and an inch higher. But it's not that much bigger physically. It still uses the two tens, as I've said before. So um, hopefully this is in looper mode. The reason I say that is there's two modes for this. You can change patch as well. Um, so let me. Um, in patch mode so let me go back to original mode by holding both we'll talk about that again in a minute how I did that so I'm going for an American bright clean 
sort of that stones thing. The only riff I could think of at this time to do something without using my feet to control the foot switch is the stones. You get the idea. So A is to record, A is to start, A is to overdub, B is to stop, uh, B is to delete and both together momentarily to delete the last thing you did. So what's cool with this is you can record uh, a clean tone for example and then you can overdub with a distortion and it won't affect the original signal. Nice and easy, doesn't get too confusing. As we all know if you're using a looper with a valve amp or a digital amp and you're you're not savvy enough to know about the effects loop, we know that if you record something clean and the amp set to clean and then you change the amplifier to overdrive to do a lead break, the loop the original loop turns into the overdrive sound, so that's not useful for most people. This doesn't need any explanation, you can just change your tone nice and easy. So let's give it a go. It's a 30 second looper, it uses a flash memory inside the amp, it'll only store within the moment. Uh, you can't store them elsewhere unless you go USB and take it out and record. Um, so it's very much an in the moment sort of looper. So I don't think we'll use all 30 seconds, but we'll put some honky tonk woman down and see what happens. Here we go. So as you can see, using my hands, that made life a bit easier with that lick. So now I can change my voicing, my effects. Let's go for a room reverb. Let's go for a crunch, fairly high gain, more of a British sort of sound. There we go. So I'm going to crank it back up again. The master volume becomes the overall level of your loop. And I'm going to put a lead guitar track down now. And I'm going to delete the lead guitar track by pressing both momentarily because I don't like it. Uh, so if you make a mistake, you can do that. So let's go. So you can see, luckily enough, I made a mistake there, on purpose. <laughs> um, so I just deleted that. Um, and that's as simple as it is, and you can keep overdubbing and overdubbing as much as you want. It's a ladder system, so it's 30 seconds times 30 seconds times 30 seconds, and so on. It doesn't shorten each time you make an overdub. So that's what you need to know about the looper. Um, once, you're, once you've recorded everything and you've got, got all your overdubs there, a is to start, B is to stop, B to delete everything. Now of course you have a different mode, which is what we were in earlier. Press and hold both, you'll notice on the panel of the amplifier you will get an LED display to let you know you're changing. And now we are in bank and patch mode. So B lets us choose between our three banks, green, amber and red. A lets us choose between channel one and two of that bank. So we can go to the, the gig and we've got six sounds at our feet with the two-way. Really versatile, and that's included. 
the extra five-way pedal is a nice slimline pedal metal casing um, and now what you can do is you can either use the five-way by itself um, and you can configure it to be anything you want so these first three will appeal to be your three patches within the bank then you can press both together to go bank up you'll notice the LED changing and then bank up again so your presets are laid out on there to let you know what they are which is nice um, there is a tuner in here I think forgive me I think it's holding these two down we can also add the two-way and make a seven-way live board now we've got channel 1, channel 2, channel 3 within the first green bank we've got bank up, we've got bank down by pressing 2 simultaneously we've then got the looper which is assigned by default you don't have to have it there but it is there by default there's your record, your overdub, your start there's your stop, um, there's your hold to delete everything there's your momentary delete the last thing you did the two way now becomes assignable to be control switches so for example, on this particular patch, A is turning the mods on and off, B is turning the delay on and off. So, you could really have a lot going on. You could get rid of the looper if you wanted to and have delay and tap tempo. And then this could be your chorus and this could be your, you know, your, your delay, whatever you need, reverbs. Fully assignable. And the LED screen does let you know what is on and off. Modulation off, modulation on, and so on. So that's how that works. Um, other things to talk about are the fact that on the back it's got a stereo effects loop. It's the first time Blackstar have done that. It means that if anybody's using their delay pedal or their current modulation pedal, if they've put it through the effects loop in here, it will automatically upgrade it to super wide stereo. So super wide stereo is very prominent here again, giving you that three dimensional soundscape and their pedals will get an, effectively get an upgrade, which is great. Um, it's using a proper mains this time, a proper kettle lead, emulated line out, MP3 line in are present as well. Um, and that's about it really to talk about on the ID Core High Power. Uh, USB of course is a USB interface again. And don't be afraid to crank it really loud here, here and here on the gain, the volume and the master volume because it really does hold its own and get it next to a drum kit and uh, you will see. Um, so just to recap, compact, lightweight, high power ID Core. I hope this video has been good for you. You can take what I've given you and make it your own and um, good luck there out in the field and get people playing, get it loud and get people psyched up about Blackstar. Thanks for watching. Cheers.